Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Um, we have uh, special visitors th this morning. Um, we'd like to welcome Pastor Gerke and his family uh, to worship with us today. Um, maybe you can talk to them after the service. Um, also, the last hymn uh, is kind of a responsive hymn. Uh, um, I'll sing the leader parts, and you'll sing the, the congregational parts. And the, on the slides, there will be a P. Um, the P is for uh, your part, and all is for the con Oh, the P is for my part, and the all is for... <laughs> Got it. <laughs> P for pastor, yeah. Um, <laughs> all for the congregation, okay? Uh, so that will be on the final hymn. We begin our service then by singing, O Day of Rest and Gladness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness, confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, 
a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts of your deeds of salvation all the day. For their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O God, from my youth you have taught me. And I still proclaim your wondrous deeds. So even to old age and gray hairs, O God, do not forsake me. Until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those to come. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O God, be not far from me. O my God, may haste to help me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood a seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. 
And one he called to the other one and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphims flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to his people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of his people dull, and their ears heavy, and blind their eyes. Least they see, and their eyes open, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lie in waste without inhabitants, and houses without people, and the land is a desolate waste, and the Lord removes his people far away. And the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, and though a tenth remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains. Then it will be felled, and the holy seed is its stump. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Strive to excel in building up the church. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. What am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praises, I will sing praise with my spirit, but I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. Brothers, do not be children in your thinking. Be infants in evil, but in your thinking, be mature. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let, net, let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they, were, they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him 
were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boat to the land, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is taught by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we join now in singing our next hymn.
God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our gospel reading. And listening to that miraculous account recorded in that reading, you wouldn't immediately, wouldn't, who wouldn't immediately drop everything and follow Jesus? The miraculous abundance of the fish alone, it's, it's literally sinking your boats. It's why the disciples followed Jesus, because he worked such great miracles. Wouldn't that be what you think? Well, we wouldn't be wrong in saying that. After all, the word miracle means sign, as in God gives a sign for his, of his divine power and presence for people to see. He wants them to know who it is that's at work and in their presence. The disciples behold this great and awesome sign, and they get it. Peter immediately drops to his knees and cries out, Depart from me, Lord, for I am sinful man. Thanks to that miracle, because of that miracle, he understands that he's in the presence of Almighty God, and it terrifies him. He knows what his sin deserves, so when God himself tells him, Do not be afraid, and instead follow him and be te- uh, catching Uh, catchers of men, Paul and the boys around him immediately obey, and and could you blame them? Who of us wouldn't follow after all of that? And what about when things are, are not so awesome or so miraculous? Consider the lesson that our Lord taught to Elijah, the prophet. Things didn't go according to Elijah's expectations. Even after the miraculous, fiery display that um, ultimately led to the humiliation and death of 450 false prophets of Baal, wicked Queen Jezebel only dug her heels in more and vowed to destroy Elijah by this same time tomorrow. Apparently the great miracle of God didn't work as Elijah expected. So he went off into the hills in fear and disgust hiding out in a cave. God, just let me die here. It's hopeless. I quit. This is where God finds Elijah. Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah wasn't where God had called him to be. God then instructed Elijah to go out and stand at the entrance to the cave where he had then put on a powerful and miraculous display, showing Elijah a mountain splitting tornado and then an earthquake and then a raging fire. But God wasn't in any of those miraculous, powerful displays of terror. That's when a faint, low whisper, almost inaudible, comes from inside the cave. God wasn't in the huge and miraculous. He was in the lowly whisper. He had been with Elijah all along. And what about you? How many of you think that following Jesus would be that much easier if he just gave you some powerful signs or miracles to hold, you, to hold on to or work with? How many of you, like Elijah, struggle and lament when it seems like you're all alone and the powerful, miraculous signs you're looking for and expecting just aren't coming? How many of you have put God to the test playing by that little game, God, if you don't want me to do this, Give me a sign. You know, you ask God for a divine sign and then you wait for lightning or you wait for the heavens to tear open and you wait for earthquakes and and nothing happens. So it must mean that God is okay then with whatever you're doing, whatever your little heart is leading you to want to do. On the flip side, however, 
how often does it take a tragedy to blindside you and wake you up to just how far off the lighted way you've strayed? You know how it is. Life is good. You're on cruise control, not worrying about anything in the world, and then it happens. Tragedy jumps you, beats you down, and takes your wallet. Why, God? Why me? It's amazing how religious people can get after they get their rear handed to them and they realize they're not immune to the symptoms and realities of sin. My question is, why would it take fire in heaven to get us to turn our backs on sin? Why does it take such a powerful punch to wake us up and recognize the darkness we're walking in? Why does it take such terror to turn us back to God? I guess the answer is found and comes down to a, that simple fact that God works his miracles of repentance, re restoration, and salvation in very humble and ordinary ways. Ways that so often we ignore or disregard. God's work does, uh, God doesn't work the way we expect or desire. He doesn't always perform those great and powerful miracles, but He always comes in that small whisper. And it is the Almighty God in the flesh who comes to us, God who gave Himself on the cross. It's not very impressive if you think about it. If we could draw up the plan, we sure wouldn't plan it that way. Does it any wonder why so many people rejected him and mocked him and still do? Does it any wonder why even his own apostles turned tail and ran when all this went down? Talk about unexpected and undesirable. This isn't supposed to happen to God. God is supposed to win, not the bad guys. And yet, this is God's plan of victory. This is the ultimate victory, first foretold and promised by God himself in the Garden of Eden. All the power of sin, death, and the devil were crushed and put to death once and for all, right there on the cross of Christ. The really sad thing is that even the rest of nature was making this miracle abundantly clear. The skies turned black, the earth quaked, boulders and mountains split open, the, the huge temple curtain was torn from top to bottom, from heaven to earth. Even some people were resurrected, and no one seemed to get it. No one except one lone Roman soldier Truly, this was the Son of God. After all this and after the promise of Christ that on the third day he would rise again in victory, the apostles were still hiding in that lowly cave of a room. Things didn't work at all like they expected. You can hear it in the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, but the chief priests and leaders crucified him. They just didn't get it. They just didn't get it because it wasn't what they had expected or desired. They didn't get it because they never really paid attention nor listened to that whisper of God's word. O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And with that, our Lord led them back to the scriptures, interpreting and explaining to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Here's the thing. Hammering on all the ways and many ways that we sin daily and often isn't going to work repentance in anyone. Only the gospel of Christ can work this miracle, and it does just that, just as our Lord promised. 
I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it and it alone is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. What does your Lord say, albeit in the whisper of Holy Scripture? What has he said about not neglecting to meet together as some are in the habit of doing? Can you really follow Jesus without being where Jesus is? What has he said about the wage of sin, all sin? More importantly, what has he done to pay that deadly wage in full for you, for me, and for all the children of Adam? God himself took on flesh and shed blood in death for you. That's how much he loves you. In terms of following Christ, this is so important to understand. Christianity is not simply a game of follow the leader with us simply following Jesus and doing whatever he does. We can't do what he does, which is why he did what he did in our place. Because of the all-atoning death and resurrection of Jesus, however, we can follow him. By grace, through faith, through the miraculous working of the Holy Spirit in these his means of grace, we can have the confidence to follow him wherever he leads us, wherever he calls us, even when it means that following entails cross-bearing. Where does your Lord call you to be, even in the midst of all your sufferings and your sorrows and your crosses? What has he already said regarding the presence of him with you always? How he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He was forsaken for you. He was forsaken by the Heavenly Father so that you would never have to know or experience that forsakenness, not even for one single second of our own undeserving lives. What has he said regarding the whisper of water and holy baptism and, and how we bear his holy name? You belong to him. What has he said regarding the whisper of his body and his blood in, with, and under the ordinary means of bread and wine? Body and blood that is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins, for the peace that surpasses all understanding understood and recognized through the eyes and ears of faith, it's all so powerful and so miraculous, even though it appears to be only a whisper. I know that this might not be what many of you want to hear, this whole thing that we do each and every Sunday morning, word and sacrament worship, so focused solely on Christ and his gifts to us, may not be all that you desire. If that's the case, then that's your problem because that's exactly what the Lord desires for you and for all people. Here is life the free and unmerited gift of life in Christ and because of Christ is here. My dear brothers and sisters, here is Christ, right here where he tells you that he, you can seek him out, right here where he promises to be. And yes, it is the equivalent of a lowly whisper but do not be deceived. Here is Christ for you, with you now, and with you always to the very end of the age. In his most holy name, amen. May this powerful miracle of God's undeserved and unconditional love for you guard and keep you unto life everlasting. And may you ever bear your crosses faithfully, even joyfully, as you follow him. And may you ever and always be at peace, for you belong to him. And nothing and no one can ever take that away from you.
this time we bring our offering forward. <coughs> We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. <coughs> Please rise for prayer. <clears throat> In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For wisdom, knowledge, and every manifestation of the Spirit, that our words may be measured and intelligible to our fellow Christians, and those outside the church, and that our amens uttered always in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the church, especially those called to be fishers of men in it, that they would not be discouraged when they toil all night and take nothing, but continue to let down their nets at his word according to that calling, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may be mature in our thinking and infants in evil, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all Christian homes, that the word of God would be sown and produce much fruit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For faith to let down the nets of the Lord's word in our daily vocations, trusting his Son will do his gracious work through poor sinners like us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For the sick, the weak, and the afflicted, especially for Kristen, Courtney, Reagan, Elaine Trainer, Bill Berry, Heather Wolfel, John Schroeder, Anselm Wimmer, Sue Robinson, Kirsten Peters, Lee and Tammy Schroeder, Kenny Krupka, Sharon Udemark, the family of Lund, May Lund on the death of her brother Richard Krupka on Saturday, also the family of Ron and Marie Engelhardt on the death of Ron's brother Dale on Wednesday, that you would not be far from them nor forsake them, but that you would always be their comfort and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all those who serve us in any way, for all those who serve in, in military personnel, for all those who serve on police departments, fire departments, all EMTs and first responders, all health care workers, that you would guard them and protect them, that they might do their job to the best of their abilities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our missionaries who preach the word of God throughout the world, for Jana Engelhardt and Josh Langen family, for Ruth Mathiah, that you might guard them and protect them as they proclaim your word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For Pastor John Gerke and his family as he considers our call, that you would bless him and lead him and guide him to do that which is according to your will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, never depart from us. Though we are unworthy of you and your bounty, you, have pleased, you are pleased to receive our meager thanks and reluctant obedience for the sake of Christ's perfect obedience. Let your word rule us and your spirit revive us to leave behind pride and anxiety alike, that we may follow you in all that we do through the same Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord 
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth, and all of earth, and the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sins of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promise a sec salvation by a second Adam, your Son Jesus Christ our <coughs> Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn. <coughs> I believe we have an announcement that needs to be made. Is that correct? Sure. Uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock, the we'll movie downtown, uh, the St. Paul Youth for Christ group is going to be volunteering down there. So if you love the popcorn next door, come on down there. Uh, it's a really good movie about faith, family, and football. And uh, be there at 1.30 for us. 
Great, thank you. He's going to get moving. Good news, we got moving to get to it too. So, what did you want to talk about?